0 to 60 in 1.9 seconds, an 8.8 .8 second quarter mile, a top speed of over 250 miles per hour? These are just a few of the absurd specs behind Tesla's long-awaited next-generation Roadster. Our transportation reporters will break down everything fans should know about Tesla's upcoming Roadster, analyze what we've seen so far, share past experiences with the vehicle's predecessor, I described it as hot orange electric sex, and cover challenges that lie ahead for Tesla leading up to its release. The exact specs are maybe a little optimistic. Really, the question is, where is Elon Musk going to build the Roadster? Unveiled to the public as a surprise at the 2017 premiere of Tesla's all-electric semi-truck, the new Roadster is the company's follow-up to its debut vehicle from 2008. It was the first Tesla I ever sampled. You never forget your first Tesla. It's still my favorite Tesla, and I think in my review of the car back then, I described it as hot orange electric sex. The old Roadster was based on a uh, Lotus platform, so they took the what were called sleds from Lotus, and they put the Tesla software battery and motor in. In this way, they were able to produce something that was, a, you know, a, a, an incredibly hot and exciting electric car after years and years of people thinking the car, electric cars were, were golf carts. So uh, it, was, it was just ridiculously, insanely bonkers, crazy fun. It definitely made an impression. While it's hard to deny the new Roadster is a sleek looking automobile that remains faithful to Tesla's iconic design language, some have argued the automaker may have been too conservative in the battery-powered Speed Demon styling. As far as the design of the car goes, I, to be honest with you, I think they held back. What it really is, it's not even really a Roadster. It's not a new Roadster. It's a, uh, it's a new GT car. It's uh, you know, got a back seat. So I don't know. I, I've been calling for a more uh, crazy-looking supercar from Tesla for a long time. I said, you have these cars that are crazy fast. I mean, you know, they've got a four-door sedan that can do zero to 60 in less than two seconds. Why don't they create a proper supercar that visually capitalizes on the speed that the cars are capable of and also makes the driver feel like they're in a machine that's gonna just go, you know, warp speed, you know, insane fast. One of the things Tesla's always been about, though, is that they don't go over the top. They, they make cars that perform fantastically well by any estimation, by any analysis, and that look good, but that don't look like they're from, you know, some distant point in the future. I think it looks great. I think design is one of Tesla's strengths. When it comes to the proportions and contour lines, um, I think Tesla vehicles are more striking than anything else you know, I see on the street on a day-to-day -day basis. From what the public has seen so far of the Roadster's prototype in action, Elon Musk's claim that the vehicle will be the fastest production car ever developed may not be an overstatement. However, some remain skeptical about the car having a battery range of 620 miles. The exact specs are maybe a little optimistic, especially in terms of battery range. You know, I know the ones from mainstream automakers are topping out around like mid 300s right now, and I don't think within the next two years they're going to be able to have any major breakthroughs with lithium ion batteries that will allow them to become much more, I guess, energy dense. Okay, can the car go from zero to 60 in less than two seconds? Sure, probably. Does the car go 620 miles? Who cares? Nobody buys a supercar for long distance driving. It's, it's not why you buy a supercar. Nobody's sitting there in their, you know, Ferrari 488 uh, as it runs out of gas and they have to pull into the gas station again to put more gas in it and going, oh geez, this is a drag. I really wish I hadn't bought this car. You know, I mean, if you, if you get 200 miles of range, if you got 150 miles of range out of your new Tesla Roadster, you're probably going to be happy because you're having so much insane fun just driving around in the thing and, and, and glorying in the, in, the, in the driving dynamics and the wonderful acceleration and everything that Tesla tends to deliver in spades. As exciting as an all-new Roadster for 2020 sounds, Tesla buyers are well aware by now that the automaker isn't known for sticking to schedule. You always have to be careful when it comes to what Elon Musk is telling you because he says start production of the Roadster in 2020. So if you put your $50,000 down and you think you're going to get a Roadster in 2020, you have another thing coming because production of the Model 3, which is a significantly less complex automobile, technically started in 2016, right? Um, and we didn't really have anything roll off the line until the middle of 2018. So, you know, sometimes 
these things take a little bit more time than Elon says they're going to take. And he actually hasn't said when the first Roadster is going to roll off the factory floor. Really, the question is, where is Elon Musk going to build the Roadster? The Gigafactory is still under construction here in the United States. And based on what our sources tell us, that factory is very busy uh, building batteries and whatnot. Actually sticking another line in there at this point uh, seems kind of crazy. Not only that, but uh, sources inside the company are telling us that the parts of the factory that are designated to be built out are being built out for the Semi or the Model Y. We're not hearing any mention of what's going to happen to the Roadster. At the moment, the second generation Roadster is expected to retail starting at $200,000, requiring a $50,000 reservation. A special Founder Series model, limited to just 1,000 cars, will cost $250,000 with the reservation dependent on full payment. Up to this point, Tesla has been the sole automaker behind all-electric high-performance cars. However, 2019 and 2020 are expected to bring a new wave of luxury EVs from the company's competitors that some believe could spell trouble for Tesla. Um, I think the one electric vehicle coming in the next few years from you know, one of their mainstream competitors that would be the most likely to compete with the Roadster is the Porsche Taycan. I think the biggest question is how will the Model S and Model X hold up when similarly priced vehicles from rivals that you know make luxury automobiles come out. The Audi e-tron, uh, the Mercedes-Benz EQC, the BMW iX3. Well, one of the reasons why the Roadster is being introduced is because the Model S and the Model X are both old models. Consumers who really want that luxury experience may not want to go to the old Model S or the old Model X. And that's really where uh, these competitors are going to be able to stick their foot in. Because again, the Roadster is going to begin uh, manufacturing in 2020. Who knows when that thing is done? Tesla is only selling currently three cars. So there's a lot of gaps in the segmentation. So, you know, it's interesting to speculate on what it will mean for the new Roadster if there are these high performance vehicles, electric vehicles coming from established high performance brands. And my take has always been, well, it doesn't matter. You know, this is not a car that Tesla expects to sell a lot of. They're not going to sell a lot of new Roadsters. If they do sell any of them, they can pretty much name their price. You don't really have what you would call a traditional level of competition at this level. You're talking about the rarefied heights of the auto slash mobility world where people can have whatever they want. The new Roadster wouldn't be a Tesla product if it wasn't accompanied by some clickbait worthy news. To the internet's amusement, Musk has already declared the car will have an optional rocket boosters package, courtesy of SpaceX, that will be capable of making it hover.